What's up, YouTube? Welcome back. About to record the next episode of the Ask Stevie Show. It'll be an interesting one. You'll see why in just a second. All right. In Audacity, about to record now. Hi there, friends, family, new followers. I appreciate you taking the time out of your important day to hang out with me. And I hope your day is going awesome. So I heard this question very early on when I launched. I thought it was just a controversial buzzword, but it's worth answering. And the question is, what is your stance on abortion? What is your stance on abortion? Now, I'll tell you, my mother and father had, I believe, two, maybe one abortion prior to having me, because I'm not sure if it was one miscarriage and one abortion or one miscarriage and two abortions. I just forgot because of like, well, they had told me that they were all miscarriages or were both miscarriages when I was like four or five uh, because it was a touchy subject. It was always a sensitive subject for them. When I got older, my dad, after years of hearing my dad occasionally reminisce, you know, what if you had two older siblings? I wonder what gender they would be. Would they be two older brothers? Wouldn't it be great if you had an older brother and an older sister? So eventually, when I learned more about the world, I think I was probably maybe 18, 19 or something like that, maybe even older when I really thought about it. But I was like, oh, and I asked him and he said, yeah, those those were abortions. So that being said, when I was 11 to 25 as an atheist, I always, well, I wouldn't say I was pro-abortion because I don't think anybody's pro-abortion. I don't think people run around with pitchforks saying, we need to have more abortions, abort more babies. That's not really, it's, it's a misnomer. But anti-abortion is a fairly reasonable take for describing the other side's stance. But I hesitate to say sides because the whole point is it's not black and white. Even the most evangelical religious person would probably could probably think a certain situation was so fringe and so gory. I'm not going to go into that and keep this family friendly, but you could imagine even the most evangelical person who's against abortion would say, okay, okay, it's got to be ethical in this specific case, or at least it would challenge them emotionally, right? Because it's not black and white. So, and to get down to the nitty gritty, I think there's a point when the soul enters the body and there's a point when the soul incarnates into the flesh, which is when it becomes, I guess, peak unethical, max unethical from that point forward. And then before that, when it's, and I don't know when this happens, maybe, it, it, here's the thing, I'm going to tell a story. There's an indigenous tribe. And this is documented by mainstream anthropologists. This tribe, when a couple wants to conceive a child, the woman goes into the nature away from the village, spends time in isolation, and she learns a song, the soul song. She learns the song from the spirit of her future child from spirit world, from heaven, this woman in an isolated meditative hermit state who has the intention of connecting with the soul of her future child learns this song, the soul song. She goes back to the village. She teaches this song to her partner, to her lover, and they sing it while they make love. This song is being sung. It's calling in the soul. It's calling in the soul. And that child is born. And when that child grows, it may step out of line. It may forget who it is. It may misstep, fall from source, stray from the path. And its neighbors, community brothers and sisters gather around that person. And they sing the soul song. They remind the person who they truly are. And the reason I share this is because maybe, maybe the soul's there from the beginning. Maybe the soul's watching the intercourse. 
but also understand time and space doesn't necessarily exist in the spirit world. So if there's an extremely high chance of an abortion happening, there's not many souls that are going to jump in there, I don't think. I'm saying extremely high chance. Like this person knows it's going to happen. I think if they get pregnant abortion every single time, that sort of lovemaking session is going to call in some kind of entity or being that might enjoy sadism, being hurt, might get off to pain or misery, or just maybe it's a high vibration soul that wants to experience the fleeting life of a fetus. God does work in mysterious ways. So the point I want you to take away is that nothing is black and white. And when you ask me these buzzword kind of questions, I'm not just going to come back with an answer that's easy for you to just walk away. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because it's important that we keep growing and we be radically honest. And so I hope this helps you think more about it, have more compassion. You know, one last thing I'll ask you to take away from this. If you are curious to explore the ethics of abortions, the best people I can think to talk to, the best people I've ever spoken to, and not for one opinion or the other, all sides are people that have both had abortions and given birth because experience is the highest form of knowledge. And I'm not saying these people are always for abortion or always against it, just like any other population there across the board. There's all types of people who have both given birth and had abortions, every walk of life, but speak to them, connect with them. Those are the best people to understand from. And you'll be able to draw your own opinions and your own conclusions from their experiences. I hope this helps, not just for this, but in life. Thank you and take care. That was a really good freaking episode, YouTube. Thank you for being here for that. Drop a comment if you felt that. Say, hey, say thank you. Say, I'm here, Stephen. <laughs> I love comments. All right, peace out. Much love. Oops, let me... Uh...